Hi, this is Leonie from Spines and Splines. Today I'm going to be talking a little bit about monoprinting in relation to one of my favourite artists, Paul Klee. Paul Klee was born in Switzerland in 1879 and he grew up studying music and was a very, very good violin player but decided to pursue a career in art instead. He became a really excellent drawer, did a lot of realistic style drawing but he got pretty bored with that and decided to take his art practice in a more abstract direction. He was a member of the Bauhaus movement and developed a really distinctive style influenced by Cubism, Expressionism and Surrealism. Paul Clay is often described as a painter, but I actually think of him more as a printmaker. Like he did a lot of just straight up etchings, but he also utilised a lot of printmaking techniques in his painted works. And today I'm making a small monoprint in the style of Clay's checkered grid works. This is a type of printmaking that's really easy and accessible to do at home with whatever materials you've got on hand. I'm starting out by rolling out some oil-based printmaking ink onto a scrap piece of paper. Choose kind of like carbon paper. If you don't have a roller, you can also use a paintbrush to do this, but I find the roller a little bit easier. The idea is to roll the ink thinly onto the one side of the paper and then lay it face down on a piece of printmaking or watercolour paper and trace your line work designed through so that the printmaking transfers across with the pressure to the good paper. And the beauty of this is that you get a lot of incidental marks transferring across to your good paper that gives your artwork a really interesting level of texture and shading. And you can pretty much use any sort of sharp pointed implement to apply pressure and get your design across. I've used a coloured pencil because I like to be able to see where I've drawn and also it gives a really nice soft kind of pencil line coming through when you take your paper away. When I'd finished transferring the line drawing, I mixed some colours together using oil paint and painted blocks of colour following the design onto another piece of scrap paper, making sure to flip the image so that the colours would line up with the outline when I transferred it. And to do that, I just held my two sheets of paper up to the window and used it as a light box. To get the colours that I made, I've used alizarin crimson, ultramarine blue and lemon yellow with a little bit of titanium white mixed in. And I found that the colours that were oilier and a bit more loose were easier to transfer across than the stiff colours. The oil paint proved to be a little bit more difficult to transfer than the printmaking ink and I ended up trying a bunch of different objects that I had on hand to apply pressure to the paper. I think I used a couple of rollers, I tried using my hands just to apply pressure and I used my bone folder to, to push down really hard on the back of the paper and burnish it through. I had the most success with that bone folder but you could also try a baron or something on the back of a spoon. I just didn't have those to hand at the time. My colours didn't come out as strongly as I hoped they would, but I still got some really nice textures and colour coming through.
The next step is based on the theory that oil and water don't mix. So using a brush and some watercolour paint, I applied colour over the top of the oil transfers. So you get the colour coming through from the oil paint and then the water colour kind of like pools around it. So you get both those colours. So you don't necessarily have to paint over the same colour watercolour as you do oil paint. You can mix and match and see how the different colours work together. I did this step straight away while my ink was still wet and I got a little bit of bleeding on my black lines as the etching ink that I used was a water washable ink. It's oil based but water washable so if I had have let it dry a little bit longer I would have been able to do the watercolour without any bleeding but I actually really liked the effect that it created. I did some blotting and different watercolour painting techniques and sort of worked the painting a little bit further until I was happy with how it looked and then I left everything to dry for a few hours. One thing that really excites me about this technique is that it gives me a way to add handwritten text to my prints in a really easy way. To do this, I was able to use the same piece of inked up transfer paper from earlier, and I just put it face down on the paper before adding handwriting and use a really fine, hard mechanical pencil. I've tried using pencil and other types of pens before to add text to oil-based artwork, and it doesn't work particularly well, and I've never been really happy with the result. And so this is definitely a technique that I'll be using to add text to other printed works down the line. And it's so simple that I'm not sure why I haven't thought of doing it before. Because of the amount of water that I'd used while painting, my paper was pretty buckled by the time I was done. And to fix this, I just flipped my artwork over, re-wet the back of it evenly just a little bit with a damp cloth then put several sheets of clean newsprint on top and weighed them down overnight just to dry flat, like you would do with an etching. I may have either put too much watercolour in one little spot or added too much weight as it stuck a little bit just in one small location but it was pretty easy for me to fix. If you enjoyed this video do all the usual things like subscribe, comment etc. I highly recommend checking out some of Paul Clay's artwork and we'll leave some links and a list of the materials that I used in the trousers of this video. Cheers.